Have you ever gone to a restaurant and gotten bad service and lots of attitude from the waiter or waitress and then realized that he or she forgot to charge you for that expensive bottle of wine? Well, what would you do? It's an ethical question, and depending upon your answer, you may or may not be an ethical person. At least that's what the author of Life Principles, Feeling Good by Doing Good, says. He's Dr. Bruce Weinstein, and he's here with us this morning. He's a professional ethicist who can explain why all of us benefit professionally and personally when we live according to ethical principles. There you are. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, nice David. Nice to see you. First of all, just tell us briefly how one becomes an ethicist, as it were. <laughs> in my case, I received a PhD in philosophy from Georgetown University. Mm -hmm. Some people have training in theology, but in my case, it was in philosophy. Okay, all right. How much importance should we place in our everyday lives on this? You say it could start with small situations, and that's important. Or small well, things. ethics is everything because it reveals the kind of person who we are. It reveals the kind of character that we have. So the sorts of decisions that we make under pressure reveal the sort of person we truly, really are. All right. Uh, let's start with some scenarios, and this may help paint the picture for people. For example, you see someone, you're in a store, you see someone take an item from a store and tuck it away shoplifting essentially, would you A, confront the person, B, ignore the situation, or C, contact the manager? What should you do? Well, you know, the problem with doing nothing, even though a lot of people would do that, is as Edmund Burke would say, all that is necessary for evil to flourish is for good people to do nothing. Right. If we confront them, we might get shot, and the problem could continue, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we that's we, do, have an ethical, we yeah, do have an ethical yes. obligation not to get shot. Right. So can, uh, letting the manager know about what you saw, as unpleasant as that might be, is probably ethically the best thing to do, and okay. I'll explain why in a moment. All right, okay. Second scenario, you're signing up for an internet dating service. The best photo of yourself is perhaps from four years ago. Uh, and you've changed a little bit, not much. So would you A, use the photo, B, use the photo to explain how you've changed, or C, wait to submit a recent photo? You uh, may not think you've changed that much, but right. other people looking at you probably will. And if you lie about your photo, what else will you lie about? And also, when you show up, the, you know, you're, the game will be given away, so why not start the relationship uh, by being honest? And in the long run, everybody will benefit, including you. All right, so some of my ethical stature is diminished if I don't be forthcoming is what you're saying. It will exactly. All right. And also people are going to find out when they yeah. show up well, at the, that's at the for blind sure, date. Yeah. So who are you going to be kidding? Uh, yeah. All right. Your friend asked, your friend just purchased a new dress and she asks you whether you think it's horrible or whether you like it. And you, know, you don't want to hurt your feelings, but you think it's horrible. So what do you do? A, do you tell the truth? B, do you find something you like about the dress like rayon is easy to care for? <laughs> Or C, use language that's accurate, accurate but deceptive. Well, I've never seen anything quite like it. That's well, a t I'll tell you what, if, now maybe I should say this, but I'll tell you what, if it's my wife, I'm lying like a champ. Now, that's beautiful, honey. So this is, you want to, in other words, you want to be remain married for a long yes, time. Yes, exactly. But no, the problem is if the person has already bought the dress, does she really want to know what right. you think or does she want what Oprah might call validation? Right. If she's already bought the dress, she probably doesn't want to know the whole truth. Yeah. She wants to feel good about her purchase. That, however, does not give us the license to tell her a lie her because when we lie, what does that do to our credibility in yep. the long run, our integrity? The way to do this is to honor the principles of do no harm and telling the truth. And the way to do that is to find something about the dress that you do like. Okay. For example, you know, I love you in bright, shiny colors. Uh huh. Okay. I love Jackson Pollock paintings, and you look like, you know, a Jackson Pollock painting in those swirls of orange and red. All right. Something like that. that would but be but isn't, that, isn't that splitting hairs? Can't you either you're, you're truthful or you're not? No, it's not you truthful. I mean? No, no, no. No, there are degrees of it. Because yeah. if you say, well, actually, I don't like it. I think mm. it's horrible. It, it, you know, it gives me, mm. it gives me goosebumps okay. in the worst possible way. She doesn't want to know what you really think, and you're hurting her feelings. How All could right. that possibly be right? All right. I want to get to that initial one we mentioned before we run out of time, and that is that you're at the fancy restaurant. You're celebrating your anniversary and the waiter was rude, you didn't like the service, but you realized that the price of the wine was left off the check. So A, do you pay the bill, not tell the waiter, and leave a bigger tip, or do you pay the bill as it is, or do you tell the waiter about the error? Let me ask you, if you walk into a liquor store, would you leave with a bottle of wine without paying for it? No, absolutely not. Well, that's what you, that's what you would essentially be doing yeah. by not paying for the bottle of wine. It might come out of the waiter's pocket, it would come out of the restaurant's pocket. Is that, how is that fair? Mm -hmm. We have to, the punishment has to fit the crime, and bad service should not be uh, punished by docking the person, essentially, of their salary, because right. waiters make their living on tips. Okay, all right, great. Finally, this all fits into what you call your five principles of ethics. And let's
let's go over them real quickly. First, do no harm. The most right. fundamental principle of all doesn't apply just to doctors. It applies to everyone. Without do no harm, there's no possibility of a society or a civilized culture. All right. Make things better. Make things better. This is where ethics splits off from the law because the law, as well as ethics, requires us not to harm people, but ethics asks us to go a bit further and actually enrich the lives of others to bring out the best in other people as well as ourselves. All right. Respect others. Respect others. We show respect for others by telling them the truth, by keeping their confidences, and by being loyal or keeping our promises. All right. And combine the final two for me. Be fair and be loving. Be fair and be loving. You know, like John Lennon said in 1967, all you need is love. Maybe that's not all you need, but life without love is an empty life indeed. So love, kindness, compassion, caring, those are all captured by this last principle of be loving, be kind. All right. And on this weekend when we're thinking <laughs> of John Lennon, that's a great way to end it. Thank you, Dr. Bruce Weinstein. Thanks, Dave. All right. Pat, I'll send it over to you because you're the picture of ethics in my mind. <laughs> Wrote the book. Absolutely. Thank you. That was good advice and absolutely true.